Hey everybody, what's up? I'm DJ Six Myth. Welcome to Sit Down. Ed Solomon is here with us, writer, director, producer. Ed, really nice to meet you, man. How are you? Great to meet you too. Uh, I'm doing, given the craziness of the world right now, I think overall, just I'm doing doing well. Thank you. I think if we're making our way through at this point, and especially for you just doing any sort of work at this point, I think I think that's a win. So when you think about this year compared to you know some of the other crazy years in your career, how does this year compare overall? Well, the context of this year has put everything in a different light. And I was, I've always been really grateful to be able to be employed because I get real uh, personal fulfillment from it. And just, uh, you know, it's been a goal of mine to be able to write my whole life. But this year I've started to understand how truly lucky I am. And when I realized that, you know, hey, I can still do my job in my apartment and I see so many friends who are, you know, struggling in other ways. It made me, it makes me feel really uh, particularly grateful, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. Even the fact that we could do these Zoom interviews, you know, I'm in my living room right now. It'd be great to be doing it in person, but there's a lot more important things going on. And, you know, it's been an interesting year for Hollywood. Like even with Bill and Ted, like that doesn't come out in the way that you wanted it to come out, right? You put so much time into it, you write the thing, but people enjoyed it in a different way. They got to do it at home. They got to do it with their families. So. What was it like to see people enjoy the movie in maybe a different way than you would have hoped for initially? Well, it's funny because when we first were dreaming about this most recent Bill and Ted movie, of course we anticipated it would be in theaters. And we spent 12 years trying to get the thing made. And of course, given the, the timing of it all, initially we were a little disappointed, like, oh gosh, it really won't get out there. But then I realized that you know most people saw the first Bill and Ted movies well after they had been released. So most people didn't even see them in theaters. Most people saw them at home. And given that the nature of this film is, it's just, it's really family friendly. It's very wholesome. There's no swearing in it. There's no violence or sex. Actually, we, we all started to think maybe this is the best way to release it. Plus we don't have a choice, right? right. So trying to make the best out of every situation. And um, I think at the end of the day, we we kind of got lucky in that it was a movie that you could enjoy without having to go out to the theaters. There was a lot, we got a lot of pushback from the big theater change, not just pushback, we got blackballed because the decision was made to release it in some theaters if people really wanted to do that and could do it safely, but for the most part to have it be a home release, which uh, cost the distribution company a lot of their relationships with some of the big theater chains. So it wasn't uh, without a cost, but I think in the long run, what we were most concerned with was what's the safest way for people to enjoy this, you know, and that what ultimately went out. Totally. And then as we go forward too, it's, you know, what is the way that the most number of people will see this? Because the whole movie theater experience is changing. And obviously with HBO Max and the news that came out earlier this year, like, a lot is going on and you know for you as a writer i'm sure it's a really interesting time because there's all these different places to go so how do you kind of look at the landscape right now i know you're so focused on your work but when you take a step back you know how do you feel about things as a writer overall right now well as a writer overall right now it's like a a new gold rush in a certain way um there's so many opportunities and to to explore work that's doesn't have to fit into the cookie cutter of what mainstream hollywood studios are requiring now you know hollywood movies have become like anthems that people can basically sing along to you know they follow these very rigid patterns and i think that's what drove a lot of people to be honest out of going to the movies in the first place unless they wanted to see one very specific type of film so what's great for writers right now is you can write something that's six hours long you can write something that's 12 hours long you can write something that evolves over periods of time Audiences can find more interesting things because there's more interesting stuff out there. Your characters don't have to be so one dimensional. I actually think it's a fantastic time for writers. You know, as for the, the first part of your question, the distribution of films and how it's affected things, I have found it <laughs> over the years and I've learned from experience that paying attention too much to how people are either perceiving your work or going to see your work can be incredibly uh, not just distracting, but ultimately painful. And I think the only thing that I, as a writer, have control over is, am I doing my job well? Am I, am I making these scenes work? Are we making the movie the best we can possibly make it? So in a way, 
with the change in all the way that movies are being seen, I'm trying to have it not affect me so much because uh, at the end of the day, I don't have control over that anyway. So it's kind of a further lesson in just focus on what you can do, which is make the best movie you can. You mentioned before just how grateful you are for your job and just everything that you've done, but especially this year, you do no sudden move. You go to Detroit, there's COVID protocols. You see some of the greatest actors in the game from Don Cheadle to Benicio Del Toro, John Hamm. There's so many names that I can't even get to them. And you're sitting there watching people make this thing into art. What was that experience like for you? Well, doing it in general. Well, let me start again that. Well, I mean, just getting a movie made and watching amazing actors doing words you wrote is already an incredible experience. And, and to the extent that I can just make every moment of that count, I really try. And when I let it slip, like I'm paying attention to something else, I go, dude, dude, pay attention. <laughs> this is so rare. Listen to what they're doing with it. Watch this come to life. It's so amazing. But then put that in the context of the whole COVID thing. When our movie had initially gotten shut down, we were supposed to start April 1st. It got shut down at the end of March and it was a big disappointment. We just got so close. Waited, 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 waited. Suddenly we got the call. I think we're going. All right, we're going. Got up and running again. So first of all, everyone is paying really strict attention to all this, the protocols. We have a, a COVID team, a safety team on set at all times, like keeping things sanitized, keeping people at distances. Everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's operating within certain zone systems and not interacting outside the zones. We're tested every other day and we're self-reporting every day. It made us all really focus on, first of all, how important it is to be able to just do your job. I mean, no matter what your job is, there's a sense of fighting for the ability to not just earn your living, but actually have your purpose in life manifest in some way. That's something that I think I and many others around me took for granted that, hey, we're just gonna work and do our jobs. But when you have to work so hard just to work, I think it puts in relief just how incredibly value it, valuable it is for a person to have that opportunity. So that to me was one particular big takeaway. The other was just, what a great group of people we had. <laughs> and, I mean, unbelievable, know, right? Yeah, not just the cast, the crew, the people, you know, Steven, the director is, um, you know, one of the best people I, I've ever gotten a chance to work with. And what we realized in the course of making this movie was just how pared down we could be. You know, we had only the most essential crew working on it, just how little waste you really, you know, can, can put up with. People stayed in a hotel room at night. We were only allowed one place that we could socialize, which was this glassed off room that had an, a patio available wow. to it. And we all followed it, you know? And that's, uh, really, that's really awesome yeah. to hear. You know, the other cool thing too is you mentioned Steven Soderbergh and you've worked with him a couple of times now, but the way that you two guys jive is really interesting to me. So how did that relationship first develop and why has this been such a fruitful working relationship for you? I had known Steven as a sort of friend and acquaintance over the, over the decades, but we hadn't ever worked together. I got a call about seven years ago now from Casey Silver, who is a, the producer of Mosaic and also produced no, no Sudden Move. Casey said, Steven wants to try and do this little branching narrative demo, like a 10 minute piece. And my suspicion is nobody else wanted to do it. I don't know for <laughs> sure, but he said, would you be interested? And I said, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in, I love Steven's work, but also anything that pushes the boundaries, anything that makes me stretch as a writer, anything that gets me out of my comfort zone. So I was all, all for it. So I flew to New York, met with Steven, and we discussed this little 10, 12 minute demo he was trying to put together where you follow one character and then you can pick and choose to follow another. It was just to see if the form worked. After a couple of months, you know, so Steven shot it. And then after a couple of months of sort of looking at it, putting it together, he said, I actually think this could legitimately be something big and asked me if I wanted to try and write a six, seven hour version of, of this kind of style. And I was, again, jumped on it. Like, I don't care what my deal is. By the way, good thing I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I was like, I don't care what my deal is. I'm going to make this work no matter what. Not just because, again, it's a chance to do a, a long, extensive project with one of my favorite directors in the world, but also how often in life do you get a chance to work within your own field, but in a way that challenges you mm -hmm. so much? That alone, I think, made me grow as a writer threefold. So that's how we first started working together on this thing, Mosaic, which then came out on HBO. And it came out in two forms. It came out as an app where you can follow characters along, uh, you know, their own particular journey. And depending on which character you follow, it'd be an entirely different story, basically, or at least a different point of view of the story. But then we also did it as a straight linear narrative. Somewhere toward the end of that, Stephen said, hey, I got an idea for a movie I want to do, a sort of noir story that takes place in Detroit in the 50s. Is that something you'd be interested in? And I was, again, you know, a new genre for me, a director I love working with. I knew it would be an incredible cast. So I was just, yeah, you just tell me what to do, man. I'll, mm. I'll do it. 